And then, oh God, we pray and ask that you would give us the answer that we will have victory and that this pandemic will dissipate yeah. and that we will be able to do those things that we normally do on our day-to-day -day regimen and schedule. But most of all, dear God, we pray that we would give you more glory and honor and praise you and thank you for all the things that you have done, all the things that you're doing, and all the things that you shall do. We pray, oh God, for our families. And it's at this time that we have really been able to focus on the things that really matter the most. Yeah. And Lord, we're thankful to you because we needed this shaking. We needed this awakening. We needed this touching. We needed this revelation that you are the center of everything and everything revolves around you. Bless the remaining of this service. And to these ends, we give you all of the praise and all and perfect name of Jesus the Christ our King we pray and we help you all to say
heaven. And I pray that you are being blessed by this worship. Please serve us all a friend share of uh, this message. Share this worship uh, experience with your friends uh, around this globe so they too can know that it's a blessing to be on the Lord's side. Just before uh, we have a song, uh, my song, we would like to just do some housekeeping. Uh, as you know, this is the year of the census, and we are encouraging you, uh, New Hope, and to the general public, our Facebook friends, to be involved uh, with the census. It's very important for our local community because that's how we receive funding, representation, and all the other things that will help our community grow and be prosperous in the times in which we live. Secondly, a New Hope family look for an email that will come from my administrative assistant, uh, and I pray that you will receive it well. Uh, this Wednesday, we would like to have a prayer teleconference. A prayer teleconference. The teleconference is scheduled to be at 12 noon this coming Wednesday, and I pray that you would call in, you dial in, and that we will pray together as one in the body of Christ. Look for this directive coming from Sister Rose Minor uh, in the next day or so and be prepared for the prayer teleconference that will be this coming Wednesday at 12 noon. And I pray that you will be online and be on the call. Now we'll be blessed by a song from Simone Kim.
thank you, Simone. Thank you, uh, music industry, for what you have brought uh, to this worship. I want to invite your attention to the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, verses six through verse eight. Verse 6 through verse 8, the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise, which hath no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided for meat in the summer, and gathered for food in the harvest. I want to talk about, now ain't that something. Now ain't that something. An ant is a creature that is worth while to study. He is a way of life uh, that is so profound that even uh, Solomon was inspired to write about the ant. The ant's actions are unparalleled and inscribed, so much so that the ant shows up in the very beginning of the book of Proverbs. Now, Solomon describes the ant in the feminine gender. Most of the ants are feminine in gender. And the proverbial wisdom of Solomon calls our attention to the great wisdom that she employs. I think today we would be blessed if we would take notice of how wise an ant happens to be. And if you've ever come in contact with an ant, an ant is hard to deal with, though an ant is so very small. But if an ant happens to get on you, you will immediately know who is indeed large and in charge. Amen. Yes, our ant, regardless of its body size, actually can carry 20 times uh, its body weight. And if we were to compare that to the human body, and if we had that ability, we would be able to carry up to 4,000 pounds. For a few moments, I want you to consider some things that we can learn from the life and behavior of the hand. The first thing that we can learn about the hand is its performance. Performance can be Defined as the process of carrying out a task, an action, or a function. At first glance, when you look at an ant, and you see an ant bed, it looks like it's just running around just everywhere, but that's not the case. Ants have duties and responsibilities and function, and every ant knows what they are supposed to do. Ants are organized, and they are given assignments and they carry out their assignments with precise detail. Ants can be classified uh, in several categories. There's the queen, who is the mother of the head of the CEO of the colony. Then there are the soldiers. The soldiers are ants that guard the queen and guard the colony. And then there are the workers. The worker ants, they keep up the colony by providing food and by working and building. Christ should be the center of our lives. And every person that is a believer in the body of Christ, you should know your duty and your function in order to build the kingdom of our God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, for we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. In other words, 
think about it, that he's in the body of Christ, he has a function, a role uh, to play. Amazingly, that when the queen dies, the colony uh, dissipates, I begin to separate because there is no leader. In order to have a good functioning organization, a good functioning church, there must be strong leadership, and leadership must be followed. I think today, we will look around the globe, and in these United States of America, we are indeed, indeed, a strong and decisive leadership in every area and every region of our country. We have, in many cases, become uh, wandering stars and clouds with our war. Not only do we see uh, that there must be a performance, but also there must be participation. There are many believers today that do not go to church, and maybe you may be one of them, and maybe you have ceased to connect with a church, and maybe when all of this is over, you will connect with a church and get connected. And you say, well, the church folk did just like everybody else. But the truth of the matter is, all of us are striving to be more and more like Christ. And no one is perfect. For the Bible says that all that sin and come short of the glory of God, regardless of how strong a believer you are, we all fall and come short of the glory of God. Here the writer who is Paul, who speaks of coming short of the glory of God, falling short of the glory of God. He speaks of an arrow being shot to a point. And the arrow almost makes the bull die, but it falls, and it does not hit its target. In all our lives, there should be goals. And we do not always reach our goal, but we all should be reaching for goals. And we should have goals dreams that we wish to accomplish by God's purpose on our lives. There must be participation. And in this participation, you will notice in ants, no one has to push them, no one has to make them do anything. It's something that's built in. And if you're at the point in life where somebody has to push you to read your Bible, somebody has to push you uh, to pray, somebody has to push you to give honor and glory to God. Somebody had to push you. If you are at that stage, you need to take an inventory of your life because it's an inside job. It's an inside job. I used to go to workshops and you can leave so excited, so on fire after what you heard from the speaker, but sooner or later the fire dies out. And the reason why I doubt that is simply because it's an external motivation. And the only motivation that truly lasts is not external, but internal. So really and truly, when the Holy Spirit comes in, it's an inside job. Notice what Paul said in Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Whatever occupation you have, if you're a doctor, if you're a teacher, if you're a government worker, whatever your job may be, you are to do your job, and we are to do our job, not unto the employer, but do our work as though we are working for the Lord. Whatever we do, the word I need to all do the best unto the word of God and do the best we can. Of the glory of God. Not only must there be a performance, not, not only must there be participation, but also notice the peace that we find with ants. Ants are not fighters among themselves, but they fight others that will destroy that work. One of the things that we too must learn in the body of Christ and in the church, we must strive for harmony and unity within ourselves. They live and work together. 
and to live and work together. And not only do they live and work together, but they understand the dynamics and the dimensions of sharing and the dimensions of solidarity. In times like these, it's a time to share. And it is a time of all of us sticking together. The research shows that in this pandemic, that African Americans are the ones who rank high on the registry of falling victim to this pandemic, which tells all of us that we need to watch uh, our weight, we need to watch our diet, we need to take care of ourselves and not major in the minds. One of the things that we learn about the sharing and the solidarity of ants is they understand evangelism. Did you say evangelism? They understand evangelism. It seems as though the body of Christ has forgotten about why we're here, why the Lord has called us uh, to tell the good news. He has called us out of the world and he has sent us back into the world. Matthew 28, go ye now for into all the earth, in all the world, and preach the gospel. And to understand evangelism. If one ant find a piece of bread and you find one ant that has found a piece of bread. If you come back a few moments later, you will find a whole pile of ants that have come where the bread is found. And that's the way it is. And the body of Christ, those of us that have found bread in Jesus Christ, is the bread of life. We are the ones who go out and tell the world to come find and come see bread that we have found. Ants indeed teach us about evangelism. But not only their performance, participation, and peace, but there is also preparation. In the text, you will find that they gather in the summer, getting rather for the winter time getting ready for the wintertime day, understand preparation. There are a lot of people that run to Walmart buying TVs, buying cars, with their stimulus check, and that's your business if that's what you want to do. But you must remember that more important thing than a television set and toys, because these are times that are tough, and we must learn to use our time and our treasure in a very responsible way. Way. Yeah. Yes. Yes, preparation. Preparation is important today. We must be prepared for heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. As I heard on to the close, we've got to learn to take care of ourselves and to know how to prepare for the future and to prepare for their family. What does this pandemic teach us? And what has it taught us? I believe that it has taught us to look at ourselves. It has taught us who we really are. It has really not exposed us, but actually it has revealed who we are. Your faith is on trial. My faith is on trial in terms of who we really, really are trusting in. Yes, ants, ants know how to persevere. They don't quit, they don't give up. If you've ever seen an ant that gets caught trying to get to a place, they will climb on one another's back and make a bridge to get to the other side. And let us not be guilty of pulling one another down. But let us be sure that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, striving to help one another and to be a lift to those that are down. Yes, they don't quit. They find a way to get to their destination. They find a way to build. They find a way to stick together. One of the most amazing things that I learned about 
about the end is that when they retire at night and go to sleep, they link their legs together with other ants in solidarity, in protection, in harmony, in unity, in oneness. These are the things that we can learn from the life of an ant. And when I look at the body of Christ, and I see so much potential in terms of what we could be, what we should be, and what the Lord is calling us to be. And I think about the lessons that we can learn from the man. I too say, now ain't that something? <laughs> God bless you and God keep you. And if you've heard this message today loud and clear, and if you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you would say this prayer with me. Lord, I need you in my life. I need you today and tomorrow. And I need you to show me the purpose for which I was created. Lord, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. And I will live for you forevermore. Amen. If you pray this prayer, send us an email. Let us know. And to God be the Lord. And now, We'll be blessed with a closing number from Simone Kim.
Remember who walked with me.